old longer than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, yes, you can. There are a handful of Broadway theaters that are really the creme de la creme for Broadway musicals. And the Imperial is one of those theaters that is just right. Yes, you can. In 1923, the Schubert brothers, then controlling over half the seating capacity on Broadway, built the Imperial Theater to be the crown jewel of their empire. The Imperial was built to be the Schubert's premier musical house. The entrance to the theater is on 45th Street, but the theater itself is on 46th Street. And this is really interesting. The Schubert's wanted an entrance on 45th Street because they also had several other theaters on 45th Street, and so they wanted to create a cluster of theaters. The interior of the Imperial Theater typifies Herbert Krapp's work. He loved using 18th century English Adamesque details. In 1926, the theater presented OK by George and Ira Gershwin and introduced a song that would become a classic. Beginning in the 30s, the Imperial created its own golden age, featuring some of America's most influential composers and lyricists. Their songs were delivered by the leading ladies of the day, like Mary Martin in her Broadway debut, and Ethel Merman in Annie Get Your Gun. But a man never trifles with gals who carry rifles. Oh, you can't get a man with a gun. Over the next three decades, the Imperial continued to present musical moments that left indelible memories, including Pippin, the 1972 groundbreaking musical. I saw the original production of Pippin. I begged my mother to take me to the show. I, I begged her, and she thought it was a little risque for a young, a really little person. But for Christmas, I got two tickets. And that's what Santa Claus brought me, were two tickets to see Pippin. It changed my life, instantly changed my life, yeah. The unforgettable sets were the creation of designer Tony Walton. And Pippin, Ben's face and his two white-gloved hands sort of Cliché, Alec Jolson, suddenly joined by more and more floating white hands. The set itself was required to be somewhat suggestive of a magician's magic tricks. For Pippin, director Bob Fosse invented the first ever television ad for a Broadway musical. And we shot the first commercial for Broadway. The Pippin commercial, one minute of the show. He said, you want to see the other 90 minutes? Come to the Imperial Theater. Yeah, it was a big hit. <laughs> For the next 30 years, the Imperial continued its winning streak. There's a cabaret in this city. In 2012, Nice Work If You Can Get It, starring Matthew Broderick, came to the theater. Matthew Broderick reminds me of Fred Astaire because he sings with such ease and effortlessness. He makes it all seem easy and natural. He just has this incredible, special relationship with an, with an audience. When you're rehearsing, you talk about all the meaning and what's going on in these scenes, but pretty quickly it becomes, why did I used to get a laugh when I put the glass down and now I don't? What am I doing? And you ask, you ask the other actors, what am I doing? What happened? You know, why is that gone? You're all trying to figure out how to keep that audience happy. 100 years after the song Someone to Watch Over Me was first performed at the Imperial, audiences heard it again in Nice Work If You Can Get It. The mystique of the Imperial Theater lives on, not only for the audience, but for those who perform on its stage. It's so people come to bring their sorrows, their joys, and their laughter. They come asking questions about life, and they're answered by what's being performed on that stage in some way. Everybody gets something, you know? So it is, in its own way, a sacred space. 